Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom and today I want to go through some of my empties and some things that I'm decluttering and kind of give a, a better reason for why I'm decluttering it because I did do some like removing of things whenever I was going through my makeup collection. It wasn't really a declutter. This video is also not really a declutter. It's kind of just like a what's kind of leaving my collection now uh, because I was noticing the mess that was growing behind me which was where I was keeping my empties and the things I was getting rid of and I was like this has got to get resolved. So I'm gonna start with my empties. The first thing I have here is the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. All gone. What I can say is I like this packaging. It feels like, I don't know, I don't know why I think it feels nice but it's just plastic. But it looks really cool. It has like a nice neon look to it. So I would say I'm an oily person. I have oily skin produce a lot of oil. I know that you get it, but I'm just trying to emphasize. So I like to use this at nighttime because I really don't care how much of an oil slick that's happening when I'm sleeping. Also, your skin does need moisture and hydration even if you are oily. So uh, why not get as much of that as I can while I sleep? I don't really care. Um, this didn't really sit on the face, like if that's what you were thinking, but it definitely is. I think it is really hydrating. I actually really like, and I enjoyed using this product. I have definitely used some others like very emollient moisturizers before that I haven't enjoyed but I really did like this one. I would definitely consider purchasing this again in the future if I didn't have a gazillion things in skincare to work through in my collection right now. I got a lot of it in gratis when I worked for Sephora. I want to try it all. I don't want to spend money on skincare right now because why would I? I have so much of it but yeah, I'm, I'm not mad at this. This is the Kiehl's Calendula Deep Cleansing Foaming Face Wash. This is empty. I loved using this every second of every time. So it is listed as like for normal to oily skin types. So I don't know if this is going to work as well if you do have dry skin, but I like this. It felt very gentle on the skin, but like it was still doing its job. Um, in the morning when I was just washing my face from the night before, it was enough, but obviously I was still double cleansing if I was taking off my makeup at the end of the day. Um, like it's not going to be a miracle worker, like take off all your makeup. The, the pumps, the pump leaves something to be desired. It always, always had like product booger on the tip of it and that's really annoying. But I, I, I like the way it smells, like the way it feels, it doesn't make my face feel tight, which I feel like a lot of cleansers do. And to me, this is just like a cleanser. It's not trying to be more than what it is. It's like a cleanser. It's not like a glycolic cleanser. I just, I want my cleanser to just be really good at cleansing. No salicylic acid in it. There's some glycerin in there. So like, that's pretty good. You really want those humectants. So I like this. I already bought it. There's a bigger size of it. And I have that sitting in my bathroom right now. So yes, 100% to this. This also, this bottle, this size lasted me, I think more than six months. So it is like, I think a $32 bottle, but if you divide that by six, you know what I mean? Like it's not like, the, it's not the worst you could do. Like you could definitely spend more money on a cleanser. In fact, I'm using an even more expensive cleanser now that I don't like. Before I start talking about the next two products, I'm not tagging them in my tags of this video because I don't want any people coming for me. But for a brief moment in time, Sephora carried Beauty Counter and then we did receive it as gratis to try. I am firmly against multi-level marketing companies. I'm not into pyramid schemes. That's not what I'm into. And if you are on this video and you somehow are someone who's involved with an MLM, and I hope it's going well for you. I'm not judging you. I, I'm not coming for you, but like that's definitely not something that I'm interested in. So I thought it was a weird move when Sephora did invite Beauty Counter to have like a, a brief stint in our stores um, and online. So I have two Beauty Counter products to talk about. This is the Beauty Counter <laughs> Counter Time Tripeptide Radiant Serum. So it's like a, a radiant serum. I like this. It was fine. The other thing about Beauty Counter is like it's the products seemingly uh, they're clean beauty so they don't have any of those things that a lot of people are not looking for in their beauty and skincare so that's great and I don't think like I think this was an effective product. I did go through it kind of fast. I you never need a whole like almost never need a whole pump of whatever you're using but I also found like I was even using less than a pump and I still ran through it in 30 days. So to me, that kind of says like they definitely want you to be re-upping, like to be on some kind of auto ship. I don't know how Beauty Counter works. I've never looked into it. So 
don't worry about it. Like I'm not, I'm not coming for it, but I would never buy this again because I'm not going to buy it from a multi-level marketing company and Sephora doesn't carry it anymore. I don't want to have to deal with the direct sales person, so it's just not going to happen. This was the other product from Beauty Counter. The one thing I can't say that Beauty Counter, your packaging is pretty stunning. Like this is very chic. I like the way it looks on the counter. Um, so like that's something that's going for you. Anywho, <laughs> this is the Beauty Counter Counter Match Adaptive Moisture Lotion Cream. Oh, Adaptive Moisture Lotion. That's where it stops. And then it starts going in French. I liked this. This was a nice easy breezy daytime moisturizer. It was it soaked into the skin really nice, worked really good under makeup. Nothing to complain about here. Just went through it really quickly. And again, I'm not going to buy from Beauty Counter. This is the Ola Henriksen Banana Bright Vitamin C Serum. I went through this just as fast as the Beauty Counter stuff. And I was shocked by that because typically higher end brands, like I can milk them a little bit more you know, just being smart about how I'm using them, not using a full pump. Like for whatever reason, I went through this very quickly. Another thing I think about with vitamin C's, it's like very hard to know if they're working or not, just in general. My skin's not bad or doesn't have a lot of sun damage. I don't need a lot of brightening. Like this isn't something that I need in my skincare regimen. I just keep up with it so I don't have to need it. <laughs> and I just am doing it as part of my regimen. So like, honestly, I don't know about the efficacy of this or how it's stored. I know that vitamin C is a very pesky ingredient to try to balance and get to work and like its effectiveness and how it's in the product and how it's mixed it. Like that's all very important in vitamin C. I probably wouldn't buy this again because I went through it so fast. And I, I, I've used some other vitamin C products where I felt like my skin was definitely looking better using them. And I just didn't, I didn't feel like my skin was dull, but also I would, Ola Henriksen isn't like a super expensive skincare brand. So I, I would probably opt to spend a little bit more on my vitamin C than this uh, to just get something better, more effective, because I didn't just, I just feel like this didn't do anything for me. Oh shit, I lied. I have one more beauty counter product. See, the thing is, I ran through them so fast. It wasn't, I wasn't trying to like get through them. This is the Beauty Counter Counter Plus Overnight Resurfacing Peel. Now I would say of the products that I used from Beauty Counter, this one was kind of like the I'm not even gonna say it's a dud, but I like to exfoliate a lot. I exfoliate a lot more than probably I need to or should, <laughs> more than the doctor's recommended amount of exfoliating. But I want to keep myself looking young, less skin on the top of the, on the top on the surface there, the better. You know, it's just a whole thing. It's just a whole, it's a whole belief of mine. But you don't have to exfoliate as much as me. Anyway, we're not even talking about it. So I would say like. This is going to take the place of my Drunk Elephant Framboo Serum, or I've also used the Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow. I think that's what it's called. And I like those two a lot better than this. Like, I, I think that maybe effectiveness, this is going to be better for someone who doesn't exfoliate like I do, and they would probably see some good results with it. I didn't think it didn't work, but I also don't think it's like the strength something that I want for an exfoliator, especially something overnight. I don't feel like my skin felt as good after using it, but I didn't, I didn't hate it. This is the Drunk Elephant F-Balm Electrolyte Water Facial Mask Hydrant. So like I said, I like to wear a more heavy moisturizer to bed and that's essentially what I did with this. It lasted a pretty decent amount of time for what it is. So I can't speak to if you are dry, if this is going to do anything for you. Also, I'm really tired of like hydrating masks because all every single hydrating mask I've ever looked at or seen is definitely just something that you can leave on, which is just a heavy moisturizer. They're like, work the product into the skin. You don't need to remove it. So I, I mean, I don't, calling it a mask is something, just like call it a nighttime moisturizer, which I think is what it's kind of being sold as, but not really being said to be sold as, if you know what I mean. But this really, this is fine. I, I, I have another one, I'm gonna use it, but I don't think I'd buy this. But also I'm an oily skin person, so my needs are a little bit different. If you have dry skin and you're looking for a, a, a review from someone who has dry skin, I'm, I just am not the one. This is from Dr. Dennis Gross. This is the Ferulic and Retinol Wrinkle Recovery Overnight, Overnight Serum. I don't know that I'm the target market for this product. I like have some fine lines brewing because I am 30, so you know. But I also have been using skincare very regularly since I was 20, so hopefully I don't look like I'm 30. Anyway, I don't think that I am the target uh, market 
target person for this. I did want to try using a retinol again or something that has retinol in it because I did try the Drunk Elephant retinol and I burnt my skin. So that wasn't fun. Didn't love that. So I figured I would do this. I honestly don't think, I don't know that it did anything. I don't know that it didn't do anything. I don't feel like my skin was like more firm or less firm while using it. But again, I think that maybe my skin is not at the place where this would, I would see the benefits of this even. I, I used it for a few months. It was like in my regular skincare rotation. So I don't know. So, but I normally do like Dr. Dennis Gross products. I, I don't know that this is bad or good. I just didn't see the use of it. I have a big gripe with this next product we're talking about. This is the Autocorrect Eye Cream from Sunday Riley. Sunday Riley. Okay, this is the Autocorrect Brightening and Depuffing Eye Contour Cream from Sunday Riley. It has caffeine in it. Okay, this was fine. It felt fine on the skin. I think it did its job. I like, it worked. I think it worked. However, before I started using this, I was using another eye cream for the, like I use a nighttime eye cream and a daytime eye cream because I have so many eye creams. I just like to mix it up, spice it up. Like my nighttime eye cream does one thing and my daytime eye cream does another thing. It's just who I am. Also, people argue that you don't need an eye cream. It's just a moisturizer, whatever. Whatever your belief is, you can, you do you and I'm proud of you and I'm happy for you. Anyway, I have a lot of eye creams because I worked at Sephora gratis. You get a lot of, well, I did, I at least got a lot of skincare gratis while working there. I can't promise you what they're going to do in the future. Anyway, the... I was using one from Kiehl's and that was my nighttime one. And I was using this in the daytime and I ran through this motherfucker so fucking fast in the annoying part about Sunday Riley products that are stored like this is if you undo the screw top, uh, there's a bag in there. So like, so like that's how the product is stored inside of your Thing. I just ran through this so fast and again I'm not a full pump bitch and and cutting this isn't even worth it because after I cut it whatever I use that day is gonna be the last of it I don't have anything else to pack this in like I just I hate this packaging like this is so misleading the tube in there it's just like yeah no like this isn't it this isn't it Sunday Riley um and I know there are like other things going on with Sunday Riley that are a bigger deal than this but like this is fucked up so now I'm gonna move on talking about the stuff that I and decluttering from my collection and just trying to find a better home for. The only thing that sucks right now is like I'm not seeing a lot of people because of COVID and um, I just have a bunch of stuff sitting in my room that I promised people that I would give to them a long time ago and I it's you know it's just I want it out of my house and I just boop, you know just it's still in my house. So the first thing I'm decluttering uh, is the Coco Contour from Too Faced. So I'm getting rid of this for a multitude of reasons. One, it's Too Faced, which has been my favorite brand. I'm not like 100% opposed to Too Faced because they do make one of my favorite concealers. And I just, I still can't believe that it's a Too Faced product that I enjoy that much. It smells like Coco. Like I'm not into cutesy. I, I'm kind of tired of the cutesy thing. One, but I will say like this packaging, like it's weighted and feels luxe. And I like the way it feels and looks. It's just the smell, right? And like, I don't mind that it's like themed chocolate. I just can't stand the smell of it. The other thing is I do have that Park Ave Princess palette that I like from Tarte that is also part of my collection and I actually paid for. And I don't think I need both of them in my collection. And I think someone would like this a lot more than me. Just, I just think flat out, this just isn't, this isn't what I want. <laughs> this is what I asked for. I also have the Lunatic Cosmetics Labs Contour Palette, which is my number one. So this just, it doesn't have, it doesn't have a space in my collection anymore. And I'm trying to be like really realistic about my collection because it's, it's still overwhelming to me. This is a MAC Bullet Lipstick in Damn Glamorous. This is older than when I started doing makeup five years ago because my friend gave this to me. Beautiful color. I typically like the MAC Bullet Lipsticks. I'm not some snob who like decided that fuck MAC, <laughs> you know, like it was just not who I am. I know a lot of people do it because of um, cruelty free reasons. So I respect that but uh but I just feel like a lot of people just forget about MAC a lot beyond that but they also keep putting out like questionable releases but I do like the one with the Harrison Reed one I'm excited about that one anyway this is just old so it, it just it's I think it's time to go so I'm gonna 
probably clean out the product and then take it to MAC to recycle. So this is a lipstick from Dior. Uh, it's shade 485, but I don't think they carry this range anymore. I have another MAC product to throw at you. This is the MAC Pigment in Vanilla. It's old. I never use it. I, I'm trying to remind myself that I have, I bought so many of the Cleona shadows that are beautiful and transformative. And that like something like this, well, it's super pretty. It's not gonna, it's not unique in my collection anymore. And I'm gonna reach for the Cleona before I reach for something like this. So I think someone else will get a lot of use out of this. It's just not for me, but it's so pretty. And I like, it has lasted so many declutters. This is an eye gloss that came in the Dark Star kits from Pat McGrath. It's very pretty, but I am not doing runway looks in my house and uh, I don't like the feel of the gloss. I'm not gonna put it on for a photo. It's just like, it's not It's not part of the Dark Star collection that was part of my journey. This next product, I'm mad that I dislike it, but I do. So it's the Ilia Mascara in After Midnight. I don't know if that this has like a fancier name. I received this in gratis when I worked at Sephora. And at first I really liked it. I like the, I, I, I like the brush. I like the way the brush looks, right? It's one of those like very plasticky brushes, you know? And that's kind of my preferred brush. I like the plasticky ones. I don't know, I think they do a better job at separating my lashes. I don't know, just my personal preference. But what happened was uh, I've been using Grande Lash, so my lashes are really long and then this would touch like the top of my brow bone or like right on where my brow would be. And now that I don't have eyebrows, it becomes a problem because it's transferring into my eyeshadow or my eye look or just onto like my skin. <laughs> and it just smeared everywhere. It had no longevity, like none at all. And it's a big problem. But I've heard other people have really good success with this. I like it when you put it on. It just, it just didn't last for me. This is from Rare Beauty. This is the grace shade of the blushes. I like this product. I used it a couple times. I just, I don't foresee myself with my blush collection the way it is, like reaching for this often. I don't have any issues with the pigmentation. I don't think it blended poorly. I know a lot of people had some issues with it because it, it was, it's different. It's different. It's definitely different. Um, but I found, I found a way to make it work the way I wanted it to work. So I like, don't dislike it, but it's just, I'm not going to use it. I just, it's just facts. Facts are facts. This is the Too Faced Peach Concealer. The thing is, is I'm pretty sure that they're discontinuing this line or they're revamping it or whatever. But like, this was on sale for a long time and it like launched and it like launched after everything else had already been discounted. So it's very confusing. I've never touched it. I would never probably touch it, even though I like their other concealer. It smells like peaches. I don't foresee, like, someone else could use this. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not. This is the Kimchi Chic Beauty Peau de Creme. Pot de Creme. I don't really know what it's called. This is the shade Amethyst. I don't have sensitive skin or eyelids, but this burned the ever-living shit out of my eyelids. It was not a fun experience, and I tried it a couple times since. And it didn't make my eyes red or puffy, but it, it did make my eyelids sore the next day after I took it off. So this was like a no-go for me. I don't know what was in it that like made my skin go. <laughs> but I don't typically like liquid shadows as it is. So I didn't even like get to the part where I would like want to focus on the performance of this. Like this just isn't it for me. Like it burned me. <laughs> it literally burned me. So no thank you. Another Kimchi Chic Beauty product. This is the Gloss Over Gloss in the shade... Aurora. Very pretty gloss. Super sticky. Mostly wanted to use this as a topper and it was too sticky. It would lift whatever lipstick I was trying to top it with. <laughs> okay, that's weird phrasing, but you know, moving on. Uh, yeah, so this just isn't, this also isn't my destiny from Kimchi Chic. Sorry. All right, this is my final product that I have to talk about. I also decluttered my Kimchi um, topper, halographic toppers. I did give them to a good home. They already like they already left my house. They're already gone, um, and I got rid of those because again I have those Cleona shadows which work better, like which are my preferred topping shadows right now. Like I, <laughs> topping shadows, toppers. Man, this is the the gay culture fun you can have talking about makeup. And then I also have the poor professional. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. I just have other primers that I like better. I guess I didn't make it clear in my video where I pulled this out of the drawer and said I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, my favorite pore filling primer is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. I just really like that one. Over this one, I don't, I couldn't really, I, 
feel like they perform pretty similarly. I just like the pot. I don't know. I just feel like the Tarte one performs for me a little bit better. There's no mattifying agents in either one of them. So if that's something you're looking for, then this isn't it. But it's like a cult classic. Someone else will like this primer. There are people who do like this primer. It's just not me. I don't, I don't hate it, but it's also like I have other things I like better. Thank you so much for watching my little declutter and empties video. If you want to know what's going on with my face, I'll have all of the details linked in the description box below. I have a po two podcasts that I do with my friend Tiffany, and I have those linked below if you want to see more of me. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to me here. I appreciate you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye!